age filled with unlimited comments made by faceless people, I find that we fall into this trap of striving to please these invisible masses. There's never a shortage of negativity in the digital world because it's easy to speak without the immediate repercussions. They're not face to face. And in this, I see so many people seeking to find favor in this pit. Instead of striving to look upward and outward for their calling, instead of being someone for an unknown voice, how about finding your own voice and standing firm in who you are? Don't let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart so that you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. See, when you do things the right way, you will eventually find favor in all areas of life. When you seek praise from those in the pit, you fall into that pit. As you find your voice, you will also find a text. Don't let that scare you. Continue after your calling. And as your journey pushes forward, so the faceless voices will become less important. In essence, the more you become you, the louder the attack will seem and the more pointless their words will become. In the end, you will have favor. Hold fast. That was a post that we did a, a few weeks back on our Instagram page. If you follow Hold Fast Gear on Instagram, then you know that we make a post every Sunday. That's just challenging or encouraging or just something that I'm seeing in, in life or business that I want to talk about. So in these videos, we're going to talk, kind of break down those posts more. And that post came a few weeks back. So I wanted to talk about that in this video, really in relation to the social media world that we live in. It seems like we get caught up more often than not in the negative, in, in the rude and mean posts that people make about you, that tends to get your attention more than anything else. And, and I get it, I, I'm in this world too, so when we make ads or, or when I make posts and, and people post a lot of hate comments, it happens a lot. I always always talk back to people because I like dialogue, I enjoy talking back, so I'll usually comment back and forth, but I try not to let that take me down into the pit, because that's the thing. Those negative words are coming from a pit and they draw you in once you get caught in it. So really, you don't need to let the negatives rule, you don't need to let those negatives be the loudest voice in your life because they will drag you down into that pit. There's just no shortage of negative comments out there on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I mean, there's a lot of just, a lot of trolling and they just want to troll because they have fun trolling. And then we get caught up in that, we see these negative comments and we see, uh, the, the, or, or if we make a post it just doesn't get a lot of likes and we wonder what's going on, how come it didn't get a lot of likes. Well now we're living for something else entirely than what we were meant to be living for. And if, if I start making uh, posts that get a lot of likes, well then now my goal is to get likes. Now my vision is to get likes. Now I'm doing something for likes, for someone I don't even know. Like I haven't met these people, I don't know them. They didn't raise me, they didn't help me get to this point in life. Yet I'm letting them, their likes and dislikes, their negative comments, I'm letting that rule my life. That's what we gotta realize and take a step back from social media. It's good to stay connected. That's what I love about Facebook and Instagram. I like it that we can stay connected with people. And it's really, really, really pretty great that we can contact people all over the world immediately. The flip side of that is a lot of hate can come back at you or negative comments. I say hate and I'm not meaning like just real hate, just negative comments, the, the haters out there. They they come back at you and they're always out there and they're always gonna be out there. But with the with the social media age, we see it a lot more and we feel it a lot more. We need to make sure that we know who we are and know what our focus is in life and never let that negative comment become our focus because then at some point we become that negative comment. We turn into all those things if we let that drive us, if we let that be our goal. Steve Jobs is sort of like the ultimate um, business guy that I love looking at because he just did things differently and he also did things against the grain and a lot of people said they would fail, he has different ideas and then they, they would hit. And not all of his ideas hit. We, we all know that. We know his history of him getting kicked out of Apple, then bringing him back and all that, which is pretty fascinating. But when he came out with it, I remember I, I, I bought, I stood in line at our mall here in Tulsa to get the very first iPhone. A friend of mine and I, we went and spent the night at the mall and got the iPhone because we were so excited about it. But a lot of people panned that idea, said that wouldn't be successful. There was a fascinating show called, um, what, what's it called? It was like, it was all about the, the, industry titans that kind of created, that built America up. I can't remember the name of the show. But one of them was on electricity and the light bulb and it helped how many people hated the light bulb and thought that it wouldn't work and thought that it wouldn't hit and it was dangerous and it was wishcraft and all these weird things that they thought about the light bulb. But now here we are, electricity. There's a lot of good ideas that don't start off with, with, with much fanfare. If social media existed as prevalent now as it did when the light bulb was started, I wonder how far the light bulb would, would, have, would have made it if there were if they were uh, focused on the comments, if they weren't. And so that, that's the thing I wanna get out. You're full of good ideas, but your good, good ideas die when you let those comments become the focus. It kills the, it kills the ideas, it kills who you should be because then you become 
something for the likes and something for the dislikes, and you're letting that be your guide. It's great that we stay connected to people, but we can't let the haters out there, we can't let the negative be what draws us in this social media world. We have to be who we're supposed to be. I mean, you just gotta think about all the amazing things and all the things that turn business on its head. They were all met with a lot of hate and a lot of negativity, but they turn business. And that's the thing, when you're doing something new, when you're doing something that you haven't done before, you're gonna receive a lot of pushback from it. From even, even sometimes from people that love you or are close to you, if you're doing something totally new, they might push back against you. But in the end, you have to find that thing and go after it. You can't live for the negative comments. You can't let that guide you and detract you from those great ideas that you're gonna have. And you can't let your great, great ideas die at the footstep of the bad comments, of the negative comments. Now bringing this back to the original post, letting kindness and truth be written on the tablet of your heart. What I mean by that is, you don't live in the negative world. So when you see those negative comments and then you start responding back with negative comments, now you're not letting kindness and truth lead you and guide you. And so this whole start of this thought was finding favor with God and man. I was thinking about that one day, finding favor with people because it, it's, it's so funny. When I look back at my the ads that we ran from 2011 to 2013 in magazines or social media or whatever, we didn't do a lot of marketing. We didn't spend a lot of money in marketing at all. But any time that we did, it was more negative than positive every single time. When you start living in that negative world, then you're not letting kindness and truth be around you anymore. And you start fighting against those things. And then you start losing favor with people. And you don't gain favor. And that's what I find so interesting in this world today, that we, we there, there, there'll be these huge social media backlashes that rise up really quickly against a company for something. And the company might come out and change their ways or do something differently, but it doesn't actually incur favor or curry, curry favor from those people. You don't get favor by becoming something you're not. You never will. You don't get favor by lying. You don't get favor by saying something that isn't true. You don't get favor by being mean. You find favor when you write kindness and truth around your neck, when you let that lead you and you let that guide you and let that be the thing that you're known for, being kind and being truthful and being honest. That's how you find favor with man. You don't become what they want you to be to find favor because that never works that never, ever, ever works. That's why I say don't live and die by the social media post. Don't let the social media post be what guides you. It's, it's this weird trap. You think that you'll find favor if you do something to get more likes or if you saw a bunch of negative comments, you want to change, change to become that thing even though it's not something you believe in. Now, when you make a mistake, you do need to apologize and you do need to change. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is if you know on the inside of you, you're doing something that's right, you know it's the right thing to do and you're getting met with pushback, when you deviate, to work with the pushback, now you're doing something that you don't believe in. Now you're being someone that, that's not truthful to who you are, it's not truthful to yourself, you're not being truthful to your calling, now you've lost, now you've missed, now you'll never find favor, you'll always be in a fight, you'll always be in a struggle. Even though we still re receive hate today in our business and we see negative comments, in general, we have favor with a lot of people. Like I'm not at war with, with any one person and I don't have like enemies in the business or enemies in the world or whatever. I, that's not how I look at it and that's not how I feel it. I, it's, it's, there, there, if you can be you, you can mind kindness and truth around your neck and let that be what guides you, at some point, you find that favor. And it might not be at first, and it might not feel that way, especially in the social media world. You might feel a lot of ne negative comments up front right away, and you think, well, I'm not finding favor. But it's not about the immediate, it's about continuing to push forward in who you are and doing what you believe in. At some point, when you do the right things, then you find the favor, and the favor comes. And so it's a matter of just um, making sure you know who you are, being truthful to that, being kind to people, just being good to people. I mean, th that. I feel like it goes a long way just being nice to people that a lot of people forget about, especially in this world that we're living in and it feels so busy and there's so many things we have to do and you can't stop to take time to, to be kind to somebody. Sometimes it's just that simple kindness opens so many doors for you that you never knew existed. So letting truth be, letting truth be about who you are, letting kindness be about who you are, and in that you'll find the favor. So don't live and die in the social media post. Don't sit there and read the negatives and stay in the negatives. Put your blinders onto that and you keep being you. And at some point you'll find that favor in life. In the end, what are you working for? Who are you working for? Are you working for the faceless masses out there in the Instagram world and Facebook world that tro troll people for a living? Are you working for them? Are you working for that? Are you working for something so much bigger and so much more important than that? That's what you have to decide in life.